It is always a somber time when speaking of the missing. State parks are seemingly a hotbed for these strange cases. It is almost as these people just up and vanish into thin air, with no trace being left behind. These cases truly stump me sometimes and leave me scratching my head. Throughout this series, I've researched cases from Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and California. Today, I have landed in the great Rocky Mountain state of Colorado. Colorado is famous worldwide not only for its marijuana cultivation, but its absolutely beautiful state parks. With 41 open and active parks in the state, it seems to make sense why so many hikers and backpackers come here to explore all Colorado's wilderness has to offer. Sadly though, not all people who come here with a sense of adventure end up leaving. Many people seem to be going missing with what local officials call strange circumstances. Whether it be the elements, wildlife, foul play, or possibly something else entirely, it is my hope that in covering these cases that I can possibly shed more light on them. If you have a case or a state you'd like to suggest that I cover in a future video, be sure to send it in at swantweller.net or comment it down below. Number 1. Michelle Vanek, Mount of the Holy Cross On September 24, 2005, Michelle Vanek and her friend Eric Sawyer were out hiking on the Mount of the Holy Cross, which is located in Eagle County, Colorado. The mountain they were hiking has a peak of 14,000 feet which is definitely something that no one who isn't experienced in hiking should undertake without proper precautions or guidance. Michelle was said to have been carrying a small camelback water pack, ski poles, and some energy bars. So safe to say, she wasn't planning on being out there longer than a few hours. The two friends began their trek around 6.30am. Soon after though, they had realized that they had taken a much more difficult trail than they had initially planned to. This caused the pair to move slower than they had desired. Sometime during the hike, Michelle began to fall behind Sawyer. By 1.30 p.m., she had apparently ran out of water. Sawyer claims about 400 yards away from the summit, Michelle said she couldn't go any further and that he should go without her. He said she should wait here for him to come back or to meet him at the East Cross Creek Trail to begin their descent down the mountain. About 12 minutes later, at 1.42 p.m., Sawyer reached the summit and called his wife. After only staying for a few minutes before going back to meet up with Michelle, here's where things get weird. When Sawyer goes back to where he left Michelle, she was nowhere to be found. She seemingly just ran off and has never been heard from again. For more than a week, officials held an extensive search up and down the mountain with no trace of Michelle Vanek anywhere. Officials have a few theories, but the most popular is that Michelle may have gotten injured after becoming disoriented from being dehydrated and maybe got hurt in a fall or something like that. Michelle Vanek has been missing for 13 years and left behind four children and a husband. It seems very strange to not just me, but locals that Eric Sawyer would just leave his friend who was apparently dehydrated. It could just be that Michelle was stubborn and didn't want any help. We may never know though. If you or anyone you know may have any information regarding Michelle Vanek's disappearance, please report it to the Eagle County Sheriff's Office. Number 2 Keith Reinhardt, Silver Plume, Colorado. Keith Reinhardt closed up his antique shop for the day and decided he was going to take a quick hike to the summit of the local Pendleton Mountain. August 7th, 1988 would seemingly be the last day anyone would ever see or hear from Keith again. Keith hiked an area with no real paths or routes carved out for the public. He had climbed the mountain before, 
but he had never done it without a partner, let alone all the way to the top. To make things a bit more worrisome is that Keith didn't leave until 4.30 p.m. and was reportedly not carrying any supplies on him. What makes this strange, though, is that Keith told his friends he was going to hit the summit and come back by nightfall, which just wasn't realistic, and on top of that, they claimed Keith was afraid of heights and wasn't in the best of shape either. They also said he was hung over from a party they had all had the night before. These are some pretty strong details that are sending red flags to me right now. After he never returned home, officials began a long extensive search for Keith. For a week, officials used scent dogs, helicopters, and over 100 ground volunteers to no avail. No sign of Keith could be found anywhere. In a sequence of tragic events, one of the searchers crashed their plane during the search and passed away as well. Keith had taken a leave of absence from his job at the Daily Herald newspaper in Chicago, Illinois, where he was a sports writer and had gone to Colorado to climb mountains and write a book. He apparently left behind a family in Illinois. Police had read Keith's books and developed his films in an attempt to find any clues to his disappearance. They found nothing of interest though, which is definitely discouraging. Keith's family never believed he left on his own accord. They stated he was happy with his life and kept in regular touch with his loved ones. His wife had been planning to visit him later in August and he was looking forward to her arrival. Until this very day though, no one has seen or heard from Keith. If you or anyone you know may have any information to share, please report it to the Clear Creek County Sheriff's Department. Number 3. Alfred Beoharts, Rocky Mountain National Park The Beoharts family had gone on a fishing trip on July 2, 1938. Alfred was just one of ten children the family had. It was a festive time for the family as it was Independence Day. Alfred was hiking a trail with his family around Fall River when he allegedly fell behind the rest of the group. With Alfred only being four years old at the time, it wouldn't make much sense to leave him behind like that. After noticing Alfred wasn't with them, they went back and searched the trail, only to notice Alfred vanished. Officials quickly came in and began a search with bloodhounds that tracked Alfred's scent 500 feet up a hill before they reached a fork in the path and seemingly lost the scent. The odd details of this case don't stop here though. A couple alleged to have seen a boy resembling Alfred crying later that day, but what makes that so weird is that they were 6 miles away and 3,000 feet higher in elevation than his family was. They claim they saw Alfred in an area known as Devil's Nest, which is near the top of Mount Chaplin. Investigators made their way up there only to find no sign of the boy anywhere. Official search for 10 days exhausting their efforts with over 150 volunteers. They never found any trace of Alfred, and his case remains unsolved. Sadly, due to time constraints and the amount of time between him going missing and now, his case is no longer active. There is an odd trend with children seemingly vanishing in state parks with their families. Whether foul play or something greater is involved, it is also so sad to see a young life lost like this. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button as it helps this video reach more people. The more people we can get to see these cases, the better. If you could help me out, and share this video on your social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or something else, it would be very much appreciated and helps me out a lot. If you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, in all things natural and supernatural. If you have a state you'd like me to cover in the series next, be sure to comment them down below 
and let me know if you have any cases you'd like to see me cover. I appreciate all of your support. If you have a story you'd like to hear in a future story video, be sure to send it in to SwampDweller.net. If you haven't yet, follow me on Twitter at iSwampDweller, and follow me on Instagram as well at SwampDwellerOfficial. Those are the best places to get updates and to never miss videos if YouTube doesn't send you a notification. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.